I wanted to become a police officer first because my thing was I wanted to catch bad guys. You know, and then when I did research and found out that's not all they do and they have to deal with death, children, and I just was like, okay, this is not for me. I cannot do that. I'm not strong enough. And then I saw a female disc jockey on stage and I was like, I want her job because I can talk. My, my teachers are always telling me I talk too much. Trying, like, uh, the first thing. Well, I watered Dawn's plants. Her fake plants. And then I tried to uh, microwave our boss's breakfast. Yeah, his chef salad in the microwave. I grew up in a house of turmoil, uh, broken house, I guess broken marriage, uh, parents always fighting. There was a, a divorce and it was really tough because I was close with my dad until the divorce and everything fell apart, you know, and so I went through my whole life searching for a good man in the wrong people, you know, because I was always lonely, there was always something missing, you know, and something was just not right with me and it was really hard because I went through um, several divorces and people that I call friends would mock me about it and make me the butt of all the jokes and be like oh yeah you know um, who's it now or um, what's your last name now and he's lasted how many marriages <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice, Steve. I'm sorry I'm just but I'd laugh it off and you know just pretend that it didn't bother me but of course it did you know and and now I know why though I had to go through all of that it's so that I could find God have the relationship with him and when I found my peace with God then I was able to find the right man my husband today loves me just as I am he um he doesn't want to change anything about me. He says, you know, I don't care about your past or bad decisions that you've made. He says they are what made you the person that I love today, and I wouldn't change anything about you, and I know that's God. Everyday life, and now I can talk to them about God. And because I am on the praise and worship team now, and a lot of people have seen me, singing on stage and they've commented on it and they're like wow you know you're, you go to New Hope Church wow and you sing up there thank you for serving and, and they look at me different you know and I love it because it's no longer you know a cat the radio person it's you know a cat who praises God you know and I love that because I'm finally using um, the fact that I'm not shy my unshyness or whatever the word is I'm using that um, to be able to praise him now and to listen to the songs and to sing to God was such an amazing, humbling experience, you know, because I get to serve Him by doing something that I love, and He makes me feel so good about it. You know, I'm trying to serve Him, and yet He's blessing me still in return. And so I always tell people, you know, I used to sing out of pain and sadness, and now I sing out of joy and gladness. What a wonderful testimony. You know, God came into this world in human form with the, with, so that he could relate to us with the anticipation that we would come to know him as our God. And he did that through the person of Jesus Christ. That's why we celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate the day. We celebrate the person. Now, God came to us in such a way that we could understand him. He came to us through Jesus Christ. Someone that we could relate to, someone that we could identify with. And, and when Jesus came to us, he came to us with God's full love. But he didn't just come to us so that we would get to know him and then after that we go to heaven. He still kept many of us here on this earth. Well, why would he keep us here? Why, if, if God's only plan was to get us to be home with him in heaven, why would he still have us here once we come to know him? Well, he still keeps us here because there are many, many people who have yet to come to know him as Lord and Savior. There's many people, and he wants us to be lights unto the whole world, and that's what we want to talk about today. Now, 
There's different kinds of lights. But today, to illustrate it, I just have some candles. Now, candles come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Uh, you have tall candles. You have uh, dark candles. You have candles that take long to light. Uh, some that light quicker. You have uh, shorter candles. You have uh, candles that they light very quickly. Not this one. Some do. Then you have white candles. You have tall white candles that you got to kind of blow torch. And then you have nice and round candles. Some are short and round. And then you have, oh, some you just got to whack over the head with the... <laughs> and then you have tiny little candles. Now, all these candles are different shapes, sizes, and colors. But the end result is the same. And if you can dim the lights a little bit, they all shine. They're all different on their exterior, but they all have one thing in common. They all shine. Now, we're all created differently. We're all different shapes, sizes, and colors. But God never looks at us on the outside. He always looks at us on the inside. That's what He looks at. You can turn the lights up now and I think we've grown up in a world that tells us that we have to look good on the outside or else we don't matter in this world and so we try to match up to the magazines the movie stars and the famous people and those who have no blemish on paper or on uh, on a, a photography website or something or maybe uh, you see a, a poster of some sort or you walk into, uh, you go down the makeup aisle and you see all these women on the thing and they're flawless. And you go real close, you can't even see their pores. Everything is just crystal clear and they have no wrinkles at all. And you're thinking, how come I can't look like that? So you buy all the makeup products and you just pack it on so that there's no wrinkles. And you think you're going to look like that. But that's impossible because they do all the touch-ups on computer. We don't have computer faces. We have reality. And we try our very best to look good and feel good. And even men, we try and stay in a shape and we try our very best. But still, we grow older and our bodies cannot keep up with the spirit that God has put on the inside. And so what God says is, I'm not looking at your outside. It's okay to want to look good. It's okay to have those things. But he's saying, I'm more concerned about what's happening on the inside. He wants to give us a different perspective than what we've been brought up with because we think everything needs to look good on the outside. He says, I don't want you to have fake smiles with dead insides. I don't want you to look good on the outside while inside you're decaying and, and your life is in turmoil. But on the outside, you're smiling. He says, no, I want to work on the inside. And so he wants to give us a different perspective. Now in the Bible, in the book of Luke, and you can take out your notes in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 34 through 36, Jesus says this, The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. And so what God is doing is He wants to give us a different perspective. He's saying, I want, you to, give you, I want to give you a better, a better perspective with your eye. I want you to see clearly now. I want you to realize that the light that is in us, that the light that He gives to us, is the light He wants us to look through. Not with dark eyes, not with not with a, a critical eye or, or, or bad eyes. He says, I want to give you good eyes. In other words, he's saying, I want you to have a better perspective than what you've always grown up with, what you've always known. I want to give you a different perspective. See, God not only comes to us and builds a relationship with us, but he also wants us to do the same thing others did for us when we came to know God. Because for many of us, we didn't want to come to church. We were reluctant. We were saying, I, don't, I can't step foot in church. No way. There's no way possible. I'm not going to go there because I'm going to be judged. Or if they know me, if they know my past, then they're going to they're gonna say, well, you can't come to church anymore because of your past. Or what if I go there and I know someone and they know about me? 
Then they're going to see me and they're going to say, oh, you're such a hypocrite. So I'm not going to go to church at all. And many of us were at that same place, but for some reason, we find ourselves finding God. We find ourselves coming close to a God whom we understand now loves us unconditionally. But He doesn't just capture our hearts so that we've arrived. He says, there's more people out there that are just like you. That if I were to fill the churches in this city with, with as much people that can be seated, we still don't have enough churches to reach people. He's saying, I need you to partner up with me as being a light to the world. And that's what we want to look at this morning. We want to look at three key areas that God wants to use us for. And the first thing is to understand this, and you can write this in, that God wants to use me to my fullest potential. Not halfway, not three-quarter, not 99th of a hundredth way there. He's saying, I want to use you to your fullest potential. I want to use you to how I created you to be because that's when you're at your best. When, I, when you live your life how I made you to live, you're going to be at your best. Life will be better. Your, your, your joy will be at its best and you will live the life that I created you to be to glorify me. You're going to live in such a way that pleases me. But we got to understand that he wants to use us to our full potential, not just halfway. Think about it this way. What if someone gave you a deal and they said, because you know gas prices have been fluctuating, what if they said to you, I have a deal. I will pay for your gas whenever you need me to. But you decide how much you want to fill your tank. It's a no-brainer for me. I would absolutely say, I want full tank. I'm not going to go to the gas station and the guy's going to pay for me and I say, you know what, just give me quarter tank. I just got to go, cow. quarter tank is good. You know, just give me half tank. I'm just going to Hamakua Coast. No, give me a full tank. Even, I mean, I mean you, you fill that thing up until it's overspilling and that last drop, you, you tap that thing. Dude, that thing is full. And so we want the best out of it because we want the fullest that we can get. Then God is saying, I, I have that for your life. I have the fullest potential for you. But it's up to you to receive it. You make the decision. You want half potential? You want full potential. You want quarter potential? You want full potential. It's really up to us. But he has full potential available. But he wants us to decide that. And he's saying, I want to use your life to its fullest potential so that other people can come to know him as Lord and Savior. The Bible says it in Philippians 2.15. It says, live clean, innocent lives as children of God shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Crooked and perverse people. We live among a society of crooked and perverse people. Many of us are still there. We're still trying to find our way. We're still learning from Christ. We're crooked and perverse people. But God says, I have a way for you to live a life that's clean and pure. And it's my way that you would live as, and shine like bright lights. In other words, what he's saying is, you are supposed to live your life in such a way that you're to be seen. Not just hiding behind closed doors and doing your own thing, but, but so that you could shine as bright lights. Because we live in a world full of crooked people and perverse people. He's saying, I need my people to shine. Because there's others who are just like you, but they don't know me yet. So I love them just as they are, but I have a wonderful, full potential life for them. I can see who they're becoming. You may not, but I see, but I need you to be a part of what I'm doing. And he's going to use you and I. When Jesus went to the cross, he didn't pay half price for your sins and my sins. In fact, when he went to the cross and, and he paid the price for our sins and he died on the cross, he said, it is finished which is a banker's term if you look at the original language that he was speaking. He was, he was actually saying paid in full. It wasn't halfway. He didn't pay halfway of our sins. He didn't pay a quarter of our sins. He paid for all of our sins, full price, so that we could be used to our fullest potential. Even though we may feel like our past is there, oh, we made some mistakes, we have some sin, he said, I paid for that so that you could live to my fullest potential. I want to use you to your fullest potential. 
That's why Matthew 5.16 tells us, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and then glorify your Father in heaven. There's something evident about a Christian's life that God wants others to see. It's not to show off. It's not in, in a way that's, that's prideful. But it's in a way that's pleasing to God. He says, shine in such a way that they will see your good works and then glorify me in heaven. There's a way to live. And he's saying, that's what I'm asking you to do, is shine as bright lights to be seen. Well, you might be thinking, well, okay, but, uh, you know, if you knew my past and if you know what I go through and the things I've done and if you know what goes on in my heart, then you'd not want me to shine because there's not so many good things happening inside. And, and if you knew how horrible I am on the inside, I, I really don't shine so bright. But here's the good news. It's not going to be you. It's not going to be me who shine as bright lights because uh, how bright can we shine as sinful people, as people who are imperfect? How, how, how bright can we shine for a perfect God? You see, he says, I, I want to use you to your fullest potential. That Jesus came into this world to love us and, and to show us God's love. And then he says, but I want to use you to shine in this dark world, but you have to make the choice to follow me, not waver back and forth, not waver from being a Christian one day and then not being a Christian one day or being a Christian one day and then going back to our old ways the next day. He says, no, I, I need people who are steadfast, who are going to shine for me that they understand that it's not going to be us, that it's going to be His light. Even in our imperfections, He can still shine because it's not our light. James tells us in 117, whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father. It's not going to be us who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. See, God does not shift in his ways and he wants us to be just like him. He doesn't waver one day. Imagine if God wavered like us. Imagine if God broke his promises like us. Imagine if God lied like us. What kind of God would that be? Imagine if he were unfaithful like us. But he says, now turn that around. Imagine if we could become just like him, that we could love just like him that we would be steadfast just like him, that we would be faithful just like him. He says, now you're shining for me because it's not going to be your light. It's going to be my light shining through you because we live in a darkened world. He wants us to be steadfast, unwavering, and sure, and faithful because when we do, that's when we're, we're living at our fullest potential, that we're not just existing, but we're living to our very best in who he created us to be. And when we live like that, you will know that that's how you are supposed to live. You just, you're going to feel the joy of the Lord. You're going to sense his, his nearness. You see, you and I are at our best when we don't waver. Think about your life. Think about your relationships. When, we're, when we don't waver, that's when everything goes according to the will of God. When we're not wavering to, am I going to follow God? Am I not? Am I going to do this? Or am I going to do that? God is saying, when you don't waver, that's when you're at your best. Because even when the storms come in and you don't waver, I'm still there with you. And I'll help to see you through the storm. I'll still be with you, but you cannot waver. God doesn't shift like shadows. And he says, I want you to be just like me. See, God is, he wants us to be just like him because that's what's spiritual growth is. Spiritual growth is not knowing. Spiritual growth is not, oh, I, I know a, a lot about the Bible. Spiritual growth is not about studying the Bible. Spiritual growth is not telling people they're wrong. Spiritual growth is not gaining all the knowledge about the Bible so that you can tell people what you know. Spiritual growth is when we become more and more like Jesus Christ. That's spiritual maturity. It's good to know the things. But if we don't become more like Christ, we can know the Bible front to back. But if we're not like Christ, we don't have his love and we don't love people how he loves them, we're not growing. We're not, we're, we're, we're not even becoming spiritually mature at that point. 
He says, I, I need you to be like me. I don't shift in my shadows. I don't, I don't shift like shadows. I, I am steadfast. Now, I understand it's a process, but he's saying when you work on this, that you don't waver, you'll be at your fullest potential because that's who he wants us to be. See, he wants us to be at our fullest potential because it's going to require our very best to do what he's called us to do. He doesn't just leave us here on this earth just to exist and take up space. He says, I have an assignment for you. And here it is in number two, that God wants to use me to find others. He wants to use me to find others. See, when we're, when we're steadfast, we're more effective at helping others reach their fullest potential. And he wants to use us. You may be thinking, like Kat was sharing on the video, yeah, but I've been through all of this horrible stuff. Well, there's somebody else that's going through horrible stuff, but they don't know God yet. You do. Yeah, but I'm not even, you know, I'm not there. That's what we say. But I'm not there. I'm not like so-and-so. I'm not there. None of us are there. Where is there anyway? What does that mean? I'm not there yet. Perfection? None of us are there yet. But God is. And He is the light. He is the one that wants to shine through us. He wants to use us to our fullest potential so that we can find others. So that they can come to know Him and that they would live to their fullest potential. Someone did that for us. You may not have recognized it, but somewhere along the line, people spoke into your life, prayed for you. Maybe they encouraged you or invited you to church, and you're at a point saying, there's no way possible I'm going to church, but here you are sitting in church. Oh, I just can come to church. I'm not going to do anything. The next thing you know, you're serving. No, oh, I'm just going to serve. I'm not doing it. That's all I'm going to do. Next thing you know, you're talking to people about Jesus. Well, I'm just going to talk to people. That's all I'm going to do. And God is like, you don't get it, do you? You are a, an important instrument for the kingdom. And he's saying, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using my people so that we can find others. John 3.20, it tells us, For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. That's what happens. We don't want to come to God because we're afraid to, or even to come to church because we're thinking, oh, everybody's going to see me. They're going to they're gonna talk about me. They're going to they're gonna know what's going on. Or if I come to church and someone's going to say, oh, I know what that guy does. I know what she does. I know what he does. Listen, very carefully. They're already saying that outside of church. I'd rather be in a place where God will flip that around and even if people talk, God will say, yeah, but this is what I believe about you. This is what I see in you, that you're, a, you're, you're valuable, you're important, I died for you, I believe in you. Why since stay out there when they're going to talk anyway? I'd rather come to a place where God encourages and God builds up and God fills us with his love rather than staying in a dark, crooked, and perverse world. He uses us so that we can find others so that we all can find God and that's what the Bible is saying to us, that they're not going to come. They don't, they don't want to because they're thinking, but, but people are going to know about my life. And so God says, I have a good way. I have a better way. You go to them. That we are the lights to shine into this world. That we go to the people. People are lost. And some people just sit in the dark waiting for someone to come and rescue them. See, when we find others, Jesus is the one that touches their hearts. He's the one that makes a difference in their lives. He's the one that shines through us so that they can come to know him, so that they can see the life that God has promised for them. I try to imagine what it's like to shine for Christ. In Matthew 4, 16, it says that the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Did you know that there are people who are sitting in death? They're just dead. Everything is dead. They wake up in the morning, dead. They watch TV, dead. Relationship, dead. Romance in their life, dead. Marriage, dead. Even when they speak, they speak like they're dead. And everything is just, ah. But Christ said, I came to give you life. 
that you would rise up. Some run towards the light, some run from the light, but that shouldn't deter us from being the light. Because we hesitate sometimes. We say, oh, I don't know if they're going to want to know about God. I don't know if they, if they would you know, even think about church. I don't know. That shouldn't deter us. What he says is, shine. That's what I want you to do. Just shine. It's not a religious thing. It's something that automatically happens when you come to know me in your fullest potential. That you realize that you've been given a gift from God to shine into the world. Imagine someone being lost in the woods and it's dark and they're freezing, they're hungry, they're thirsty and they're all alone. And they've lost hope because the search party is gone, the, the helicopters have been uh, gone and, and you're just sitting there all alone waiting for someone to rescue you. Maybe you got lost in the woods or something and you're just sitting there and you're freezing cold and now you see way in the faint distance a flashlight, but it's real dim, but you see a flashlight and there's a glimmer of hope. And maybe something deep down inside tells you there's someone looking for you. That maybe, maybe they're specifically trying to find you and so you, you gather enough energy to, to call out. And then that person comes with their flashlight and finally finds you. That's what, that's what happened to many of us. And you may not have recognized it, but along the way, someone did something, said something, prayed, or, or whatever it was, along the way, and then finally we found Christ. Be a part of what God is doing, that, that he wants to use us to find others. Luke 15, 8, Jesus gives us an illustration, a story. And he says, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. No one looks for anything in the dark without trying to use light. Have you tried looking for something in the dark? It's almost senseless that if you drop something in the dark and you're trying to look for it, or you, you, you maybe from your car to your house and it's dark outside and you dropped something and you have to come back outside to look for it, you're not going to just walk outside in the dark and hopefully you stumble on it. You're not going to see it. You get a flashlight or you use your phone and you use the light so you can find it. And that's exactly what God does with you and I. He says, you are my light that I'm going to use, but I'm, it's not going to be your brightness that's going to shine. It's going to be mine. And I'm going to shine through you because there's lost people that I want to find and I'm going to use your life to find it because they can relate to you. So it's not going to be us. It's going, it's going to be God. See, God lost mankind to sin. We were separated from God by sin. But he uses us to find those who are, as what we call, sinners. We're all sinners. And it's interesting that God will use imperfect people to reach imperfect people so they can experience God's perfect love. Genius! Why didn't we think of that? Why? Because God has all the wisdom. He says, I'm going to use imperfect people. Sometimes we think we need to be perfect in order to reach people. And God says, that's not going to happen. There's no perfect people, but there's a perfect God. Therefore, in our last point, God wants to use my life to shine through. It's not going to be us. It's going to be God's perfect love. It's who he is, not who we are. It's his power, not ours. It's his light, not ours. See, God shines his love through imperfect people. And he wants to use us to reach imperfect people so they could find his perfect love and experience his perfect love. It's the kind of God he is. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, it says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And most of us would say, wait, wait, wait a minute. So God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, so what you're saying, Lord, is that it's not our light. It's your light that you, have sh that you shown in our hearts. 
Because most of us would say, I'm not the brightest candle. And that's okay. It's not going to be our light. It's going to be God's light. And God didn't say that we needed to be the brightest candle. All He asks is that we shine for Him. And that we let Him shine through us. That's what's going to matter. See, God is he, he, he's very good at what He does. Because many people have a hard time getting to know God. He says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because no man can see God face to face and live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in disguise. I'm going to come in disguise. And I'm going to enter into a, an imperfect person who said yes to me. They're going to invite me in. And now they're going to be used by me. So what God does is he, come in, he comes into your heart and my heart. And then... When we go out into the world, people see our faces, but they sense the love of God. They see you, but they sense God. And they feel something different. And something draws them closer to God. It's not going to be us. It's going to be Christ in us. That it is I who no longer lives, but Christ who now lives in me. That's the light that we shine. I love this story. At, at church, a little girl named Jane, she listened to the sermon called Let Your Light Shine. The pastor was speaking on. But she didn't understand what that meant. What does that mean, let your light shine? So she asked her mother, she said, Mom, what was the pastor talking about when he said let your light shine? Well, the mom said, well, it means, you know, be good and, and be obedient and be cheerful. Well, in the afternoon, there was trouble in the nursery. And so they found out that it was Jane. And so the mom goes to the nursery and she says, Jane, what happened? What happened to shining your light? And she says, well, mom, uh, Cindy wasn't being very friendly. And so I just couldn't take it anymore. So I blowed my light out for just a moment so I could take care of business. <laughs> but you know what? Many of us, we do that. We shine our light and then, oh, somebody just irritates us. Oh, I got to say this. I got to say this. So we blow out our light. And all we do is fill the place with smoke. And we're not shining anymore. And all we are, we're, we're, a, we're still there. We're still a person. We still believe in Christ, but we're not shining. Thank God that He says, "You know what? I, I forgive you. I I can light your life up once again. You can learn from your mistakes." But I want to encourage you, even though it gets tough, don't blow out the light. Let it so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's who He created us to be. Ephesians five eight says, "For you were once darkness." But now you are light in the Lord. Not, then he says, walk as children of light. I love that. The Bible encourages us to shine even when it's tough because God wants to use us to shine through. And even though it gets difficult, he's saying it's not going to be your light. In fact, even when it's difficult and you still shine, even more glorifying to me because people will look at you and think, what happened? They're going to see you, but they're going to sense my love. They'll see your face, but they'll recognize mine. He says, that's the people I'm looking for to help find others so that I can shine through. It's not our light. It's his. Ephesians 5.14 says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will what? Give you light. We've got to rise up. Rise up from this sleep. Rise up from a dead life so that Christ can give us a light to shine. It's not going to be our light. It's Christ's. It's not going to be your power. It's going to be His. It's not your will be done, but thy will be done. It's not for your glory or my glory. It's for His glory. That's why we shine. But I want to encourage you with this final scripture that we have for this morning. And it's found in 1 Peter 2.9. This is the encouragement that God wants to give to all of us he says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen, you and I weren't saved by God so that we can just hang out in this earth, on this earth, and do whatever we need to. No, he says, I'm going to call you to be used for me so that you can show others how great I am and that one day they would come to understand this marvelous light. And it's all found in him. It's not going to be us. He says, you're going to proclaim the praises of God. That's why I've given you invitations in your bulletin. You should have that invitation. It's so that you can hand out, so that you can invite someone. Take a picture of it. Use it to Instagram or Facebook or text somebody that picture. God has given us technology so that we can reach more people. Use it for him. We have more outside that you can pick up, but God, God equips us so that we can shine as lights into this world. And he has given us ways to reach out to people who have yet to come to know him as Lord and Savior. Let him shine through you. When you do, you will experience a greater joy because you'll be operating at your fullest potential. And then we'll begin to understand that Christmas does change everything. Amen. You can close your Bibles and you put away your notes. Now, I've been communicating to you for the past couple weeks on uh, just the different things that are happening here at New Hope. And uh, some weeks ago, we talked about planting this church uh, with Pastor Stephen Rice. And we're going to be receiving a special offering for that in just a moment. Um, and only if God speaks to your heart. Some of you are saying, how do we support this church plant? Well, we're going to be doing that this morning in, in just a, a little bit. And if God speaks to you, the Bible says, give with a cheerful heart. So if God doesn't speak to you, just be obedient to him. And, and if he's saying you're not to give, but if he's saying be a part of it, then, then give cheerfully. And God will bless that, that offering for the furtherance of his kingdom. But before Pastor Steve comes up, I, I want to close with this story that I think helps us to really understand on being a light to the rest of the world. And I'll read it. It says, on the coast of Norway is a lighthouse where a keeper lived with his two children. Well, one day the keeper went to the distant shore for some supplies. A storm arose and he was unable to return. The time for lighting the lamp came and Mary, the elder child, said with her little brother, we must light the lamp. Well, how can we? asked her little brother, Willie. We ain't big enough. But the two children climbed the long, narrow stairs to the tower where the lamp was kept. Mary pulled up a chair and tried to reach the lamp and the great reflector, but it was just too high. Well, feeling her way down the dark stairway, she came back up again with a small oil lamp in her hand. I can hold this up, she said to her little brother. Well, she climbed on the chair again, but still the reflector was just beyond her reach. It was just too high. Well, get down, said Willie. I know what we can do. So she jumped down, and Willie got on all fours with his little body on the chair. Stand on me, he said. And she stood on the little fellow as he struggled on this chair. Well, she raised the lamp high and its light shone far across the water, holding it first with one hand and then, and then changing hands as she got tired. She called down to her little brother and she said, Are you okay? Because my arms are hurting. Are you hurting down there, Willie? Of course it hurts, he called back. But keep the light burning because dad might be out there and he needs to find his way back home. It's a small price to pay in this painful moment because the joy we will have when we see dad will be like no other. I thought 
when it comes to what Christ did for us, that when he was on the cross, he hurt. And if you were to ask Jesus Christ, does it hurt being on the cross? He would say, absolutely. But I'm doing this because there's many people that might still be out there in the storm that have yet to find their way back home. And I'm willing to go through this painful situation so that many people will come to know the love of the Father up in heaven. And he says, so let your light so shine before men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we pray that our hearts would be in tune with you. As we seek your face and as we understand your love, that there's no greater joy than than coming to know you and, and building this relationship with you, that we would have a joy that comes from you. Now, there may be some here, Lord, I know that they may not have a relationship with you, but that they're on their way to finding you, that they, they understand how much you love them. And if any of you are here this morning and you're saying, boy, I've, I've, never, I've never given my heart to Jesus Christ, and maybe right now your opportunity is to give Christ your heart. That you would say to him, I, I, I understand that you paid the price for me and I want to give you everything that I have so that I can live to my fullest potential. And so if any of you are here this morning and you're, you're wanting to give your heart to Christ, I want to ask that you would just lift your hand right now. and that You never said yes to Christ yet, but this is your first time that you're saying Christ. Could you just lift a hand? I want to pray with you. Good. Anybody else? Just hold your hands up. You want to say yes to Christ. I'm going to pray with you. Good. Anybody else? Good. In the back. God sees your hand. Good. God sees you. God sees you. God bless you. Back there. Anybody else? You're saying yes to Jesus. Good. God sees your hands. You can put your hands down and let's all pray this prayer together, especially for those who You're saying yes to Jesus Christ for the very first time. And here's the prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean and make me brand new. I want to be the person that you created me to be. And now I live for you. And I thank you In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen.